ومن <تصفيق> يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yati Allah wa rasuluhu faqad faza fawzan adhima amma ba'd in saka hadith kitab Allah azza wa jal wa ahsan hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wasallam wa shir amur muhtuthatuha wa kullu muhtatha fil islam bid'ah wa kullu bid'ah dalala wa kullu dalala fil nar all praise is due to Allah azza wa jal we praise him and we extol him and we seek refuge in Allah to barak wa ta'ala from the evil within ourselves and evil inclinations of our wrong actions whomsoever Allah guides can be never left astray in misguidance and whomsoever Allah allows to be left astray and there's no guide for that individual really the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah to barak wa ta'ala the Quran al karim and the finest guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones, bid'ah. And every bid'ah in Islam is a going astray. And every going astray leads to the hellfire. That's Allah al-Afiyah. May Allah Azza wa Jalla keep us all safe. As what follows, O you who believe, be consciousness of Allah. Have the consciousness of Allah. Attaq Allah and always speak a word that is true. As a result, Allah Azawajal, He will rectify our affairs and forgive us of our sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed achieved a firm handhold. As would follow, my dear Prophet Salam Iman, today I would like to speak about an issue or a topic that has been a topic of discussion for many, many centuries. And this is a topic which has been a topic of debate and a focus of debate amongst every class of people and every type of person, whether they are following a specific religious doctrine, whether they are Muslim, Jew, Christian, Buddhist, whatever form of religion that they follow, 
this subject matter has been a, a hot topic of discussion for many, many centuries. So today I want to just touch on it briefly, and that is, why does Allah allow suffering to take place in the world? Many people have been asking this question for so many years. And many people who are atheists, who claim to not believe in the Creator, that if there is a Creator, then why does He allow innocent women and children to suffer or to be harmed or even killed? And why is it that bad things happen to good people? These are the questions that people have been asking for centuries. Why do these things take place? Naturally, as believers, we do and we should feel sad when we see or we hear about people who are suffering. We, if we have an ounce of Iman in our hearts or feeling emotion within ourselves, we feel sad when we see people suffering, especially when we see innocent people who are suffering. But when we speak about this subject as believers, I want us to ponder on something which is directly connected to this subject matter, which those other people who follow the other adyan, the other religious doctrines, they usually put out of the equation, which is the correct understanding or ideology of martyrdom in Islam. Who is considered to be a martyr or a shaheed. And this is something which is correctly understood in the teachings of Islam. And there's a hadith which has been found in Sahih Imam Muslim, Amrasak. He said that he asked Abdullah ibn Mas'ur about the ayat, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ and think not of those who have died in the path of Allah or those who were killed in the path of Allah as dead. But verily, they are alive with their Lord being provided. And Abdullah, he said, Wallahi. When we were with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we asked him this very question. How is that? That those people who were killed in the path of Allah, that they, we should not consider them as dead, but they are alive with Allah, being provided. He said that, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that those martyrs are alive with Allah inside the bellies of green birds, like lanterns, hanging underneath the arsh of Ar-Rahman. And then when they leave that bird, or that green lantern of a bird, they wander about in Jannah, in paradise, anywhere they please. And then Allah asks them, the Prophet ﷺ goes on to explain, that Allah asks those martyrs, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? They say, we don't need anything. What else can we want? when we're allowed to wander freely in Jannah as we please. And Allah Azza wa Jal keeps asking them, keep asking them two and three times, what is it that you want? And then when they, the, the shaheed, the shuhada, the martyrs, find out that Allah will not stop asking them, they say, oh Allah, the only thing that we desire is for our souls to be put back into our bodies and that we can return back to earth and we can again be killed for your sake. Then when Allah finds this from them, that they are content, he leaves them alone. Allah Akbar. So, many Muslims, to make it perfectly clear, many Muslims, they have a very distorted understanding of martyrdom in Islam. We have to understand that they consider, many Muslims, they consider retaliation in the form of suicide for those people to be considered as martyrs in Islam. So let me make it very clear here on this mimbar that none of us here who follow the understanding of the Salaf of Saleh, they believe that 
I would consider that suicide to be something which is halal. We at Masjid Surat al-Mustaqim, we do not condone any act of terrorism or suicide. This is something which has nothing at all to do with Islam. For any Muslim to promote or to say that it is okay to blow themselves up so as to kill other people, then that is something which is haram. Killing themselves is haram in Islam. But the Prophet ﷺ, he said that anyone who kills themselves in this life, they will be continuously killing themselves over and over again in the hellfire. If they use a weapon and kill themselves, they will be continuously stabbing and killing themselves over and over again in the hellfire. If they use a bomb and blow themselves up along with other people, they will be blowing themselves and they will be getting the sin of those people who they killed over and over again. So senseless violence and killing has no place in Islam. To make that, perfect, that point perfectly clear. So we have to understand that this is alien to the correct belief of the Salaf and the Salih. That we do not condone that and we do not believe that. And for any Muslim to say that that is okay to do in retaliation, then they have an ideology which is called the ideology of the Khawarij. And those people are the Khariji or the Kharijite who left the right understanding of Islam. And those people, they call to violence and killing of anybody who opposes their way. So my dear Salam Iman, when we think about those people who were innocently killed or persecuted for their religion or because they do not have adequate weapons to defend themselves, we have to think about those people being considered as shaheed. Because when we stay firm on our deen, or those people who are suffering and are killed are firm on their deen, and they don't want to revert from their deen, they are persecuted and they are suffering just because they say, La ilaha illallah, we have to understand that if they die in this state, then they are shaheed. They are considered as martyrs in Islam. Allah he had told us, and we have to remind ourselves this all the time, and we have to remind those people who have this distorted ideology that man whoever has the taqwa of Allah, man whoever has the consciousness of Allah, Allah will give them a way out of any difficulty. There's a hadith, which is in the of Imam Bukhari and Muslim, and the authority of Abu Huraira, who said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that the shuhada, the martyrs, are of five types. The martyrs are of five types in Islam. One who dies of a plague. One who dies of a plague is one. One who dies of an, an ailment of their stomach. One who drowns is also considered as a martyr. One who dies underneath the debris of a building or something that collapses on them. And finally, the one who dies who is maghazi, a fighter in the path of Allah. And also, in another hadith, the Prophet said that the woman who, while giving birth child to their child, dies while giving birth to their child, is also considered as a martyr in Islam. And with this in mind, no one can say that the highest form of martyrdom is the one who goes out and fights somebody in the path of Allah. There isn't anything that indicates that in this hadith or any other hadith that the highest level of martyrdom is the person who fights and is killed. No, the Prophet said that these are all considered as martyrs. And this is according to our level of iman, our faith. So when we hear about oppression, my dear iman, we have to consider that those people who have been killed, that perhaps, inshallah, they'll become shaheed. And we should feel sad for them, but at the same time, we should be jealous of them because they hope, we hope, inshallah, that they held on to their faith. We should feel that, inshallah, and pray for them that Allah, he gives them the thabat, gives them the firmness in their faith. So as Muslims, we have to patiently preserve our Islam and patiently hold on 
to the Quran and authentic Sunnah. And we have to feel sorry and very, very much pain for those people who are suffering and are being punished and even killed just because they say La ilaha illallah. And we have to make dua the Allah Allah keeps them firm. There have been many attempts from these misguided Muslims to use ayat and hadith, to distort ayat and hadith to justify their position that terrorism or suicide is permissible in Islam. For example, because I have debated with many of them. I've debated with some of them. I will not say many of them. I've debated with some of them. They like to use the proof in where Allah Allah says, Qutul Ashab al the story of the boy and the king. This boy who was working for a king, and it's a long hadith, that after he became firm in his iman, that this king sought to kill this boy. And he tried many means to kill this boy. He tried to throw him off into the ocean. He tried to get his courtiers to throw him off the side of a mountain. He tried so many ways to kill him, but he was unable to kill the boy. Until the boy himself said that, you will not be able to kill me unless I tell you how to kill me. You will only be able to kill me by gathering all the people of this town in one place and get an arrow from my quiver and say, Bismillah, Rabbi Galam. In the name of Allah, the Lord of the boy. And shoot me with that arrow and you'll be able to kill me. So the boy, the king, did as the boy had commanded and the boy died and as a result, all the people in the village, they became Muslim. So Allah Jal, telling us about the incident, he said, He said, the people of the Aqdud is the people who made the ditches in the ground. It's a plural of ditch. They made ditches with fire in them. And they sat down around the fire and they watched what happened. Allah says that those people of the ditch were cursed because they punished the believers. Allah says, And what was their sin? What was their wrongdoing except that they believed in Allah, the mighty and majestic? So in this verse, Allah is giving us information of that incident that took place way back in the past. Thousands of years ago, Allah Akbar, who were a group of believers and how they will be in paradise. And those people who punish them, that they're cursed. The believers were killed and the ones who killed them were alive. So Allah says that those people, those aristocrats, those high society people who punished and killed the innocent believers just because they said, La ilaha illallah. Their sin was, Their only crime against humanity was that they were believers. They were killed in a very, very bad way. They were burned in the fire. But in the next life, they'll be in paradise. So the story of Ashab al Khdud, I want all of us, inshallah, when we go home tonight, to read about the story of the boy and the king. If you just type, on the internet, the story of the boy and the king, or the hadith of the boy and the king. You'll find it. You will find it, inshallah. And this is a story about, as the Prophet said, this hadith is Sahih, Sahih Muslim, about a, a group of people who, after they became believers, this tyrant king made these ditches of fire and he ordered them to jump into the fire, recant from their faith, leave your iman. Leave your faith or jump into the fire. Those who did not leave their faith, they were either pushed into the fire or they jumped in. The majority of them, they jumped into the fire. And the Prophet ﷺ, he made a special mention that there was a woman standing at the edge of one of the pits and she was hesitant to jump into the fire. And she was breastfeeding her young child. And the Prophet ﷺ, he made a demonstration and he said that the baby took his thumb out of his mouth and said, Oh, my mother, jump into the fire because we are on the truth. Jump into the fire because we are on the truth. So then the lady, she jumped into the fire. So, my dear Muslim Iman, we have to make dua and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the thabat. Allahumma thabatna. Oh, Allah, thabatna. Oh, Allah, keep us firm. 
as this young boy said to his mother, this breastfeeding mother, he said, oh, my mother, endure this fitna because we are on the, on the truth. Jump into the fire. So when we go home tonight, I would really humbly request that we look at this hadith. And there's a lot of things mentioned in this hadith. And this is something which would bring up our iman. When we study this, it's a very long hadith. But it's very interesting. And there's many details of this hadith. Look up that hadith and try and find a bona fide scholar to Yeshua explain this hadith. And we'll gain a lot of benefit. And inshallah, it will help us and it help us to build and increase our iman. There's many things in this hadith. It's packed with benefit. So may Allah Azawajal help us and keep us firm. And may Allah Azawajal keep those believers who are suffering in other parts of the world to help them and help us to resist against the cause of violence and avoid getting into conflicts and avoid calling to or being involved with those people who call to killing of innocent people. Amin, amin, amin. As we all know, as adults, that we'll always pass through various stages in our lives in regards to our Iman. And these stages that we go through in our Iman is also as to test the quant and quality of our faith. We're going to go through various stages in our development or developmental process of our Iman so as to test the quant and the quality of our faith. If we're sitting down very relaxed and not putting our faith to the test, then what is the, what is the proof? What is the, as they say, what is the proof in the pudding? What is the proof of our Iman? What is the proof that we are real believers? We have to look at ourselves and wonder, what is it that makes us distinguish as a believer in this society? Because there are different forms of fitna. And this very elegant Arabic word, a fitna, is something which is meant to mean fire. Which is meant to mean burning with fire. So as to bring out the good quality of a thing. We know that the process of getting a diamond, it goes through a lot of pressure and gases. The process of digging and oaring out, digging and extracting diamonds, gold, silver, precious metals. It's a very severe and intense process and dirty. But in the end, what do we get? We get a very precious jewel. So we have to test ourselves. We don't ask Allah to put us through fitna. But we have to push ourselves a little bit to resist the cause of unnecessary fighting and killing. We have to push ourselves to want to pray. These are different forms of jihad, mujahida, struggling against ourselves, struggling against the, the comforts. As Allah says, inama amwalikum wa awlalikum fitna. That verily our wealth and our, our family, as wajikum wa our wives and our children, our fitna. These are different forms of fitting, tests and trials. Some of us will be tested in, by means of our child. We'll be tested by means of our wives, our, our wealth. We'll be tested in all of these things. <laughs> Finally, to end off, there's an authentic hadith in um, Abu Dawood, the Sunnah of Abu Dawood and Turmidhi, where the Prophet Sallallahu has said that, ahead of you, ahead of you lies days of biting. He said biting patience. Biting patience with a person who will be a believer in those days, it would be like a person holding on to hot coals. A believer in those days of biting patience would be like one who's holding on to a hot coal, holding their deen. It would be very difficult. But the person who holds on to their deen in those difficult days will get the reward of 50. Of 50. So then... They asked, the Sahaba, they asked the Prophet, 50 of who? Of them? You know, he said, 50 of you. You will get the reward of 50 of you. Allah Akbar. So we are in those far off days when we hold on to the Sunnah, the Quran and Sunnah, 
according to the correct legislative understanding. We're not trying to distort the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah so as to imply things out of place, so as to please certain groups of people. No, this is all mujahida. This is all a struggle that we struggle against ourselves, we struggle against our homeland, we struggle against our tribe. It's very difficult for a person who is very tribal motivated or tribalistic to go against their tribe when they know that they're wrong. So as not to pay into our tribal efforts because they know that, that some of that money is going to kill innocent people. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. So in these days, my dear Prophet Salam Iman, when we hear about these innocent people who are being killed, then we have to be patient on the sunnah. We have to avoid any acts of terrorism or anything that seems like, that smells like, that looks like terrorism. We should avoid it, even if we have to go against our own tribe and our family. So my advice to myself and all of us is that we should remain patient on the sunnah. We should remain patient on the Quran, authentic sunnah, on understanding of the Salaf of Salih. May Allah Azawajal have mercy on all of us. May Allah Azawajal give us the tawfiq to be of those who learn the sunnah properly and teach it to others without any type of distortion. Allahumma amin. Inna Allahumma laik tuya saluna na nabi. Ya iladina aminu. Salam sabta sinimun. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama salli ta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majir. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama barak ta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majir. Rabban aati nifti na hasna. Wafrakas. Waqin adabuna. Waqim salah.